Hello again, it is I, Frieza700. And I know I said in my last video I was going to do a hentai review, but after getting a slight taste of the speed of Jagatai Khan, I kind of felt like doing some more Primark lore. As you can tell by the title, we're doing the most hateful and the most sad Primark and Grodd. Now, I said sad. Now, there's a reason for that. Angron is a very sad character mostly because he got dealt a shit hand. You know the saying, you just have to make do with the cards you're dealt. And in Angron's case, he got dealt probably the shittiest hand we've ever seen out of all the Primarchs. Now, Conrad Kurz had no father. So that's kind of hard to put in comparison to Angron. But the reason why I say Angron got it worse is because, if you already know, Angron was put on a world that really likes gladiatorial matches. And if you're a superhuman demigod, you're a pretty good fighter. So when Angron crash landed on New Nuceria, I think it's pronounced Nuceria, it could be Nucaria, I don't give a shit either way. So Nuceria has some fascinating futuristic technology and is run by the extremely rich. The whole population is poor, but the extremely rich own the planet. And the way they keep the peasants from revolting is they hold gladiatorial matches, and this distracts the peasants from the cruelties that they suffer day in, day out. In fact, starvation is a normal on this planet. So, Angron being born here, um, he was in the mountains, and a slaver found him. Of all the fucking people, it had to be a slaver. If it was a peasant, they may have took him in, may have raised him. If it was a noble, he may have seen some worth as a bodyguard. But no, as a slaver, he only thought of one thing. This is going into the Colosseum. Now, the reason why he thought a baby would go into the Colosseum is because of one big fucking thing. The baby was surrounded by corpses of aliens, of Xenos. Now, in older editions, it said unidentified, unknown Xenos species. Now we know that those were actually Eldar. And we don't know why Eldar would lose to a fucking baby, but we do have a hunch that maybe these Eldar foresaw the terrible atrocities that this infant would cause. And Eldar being unexplaining pieces of shit, they tend to wipe out colonies of humans if they foresee a possible future where this colony could be a threat to them in the galaxy. So that's enough reason for me, and that should be enough reason for you, but if you don't like it like I don't like it, that's okay. There's tons of lore in Angron that kinda just isn't explained. And we're gonna go into that. But save your questions for later, we're gonna get into it. So, the slaver finds Angron, a little baby, the sexy little Primarch he is, and takes him into the Colosseum. Now, this planet does something to their gladiators to make them stronger, angrier, bloodier. Well, they input this Butcher's Nails, which happens to be the name of the book, but also Butcher's Nails are essentially where they remove the vital parts of your brain and they implant this cybernetic augmentation. Now, this is not an augmentation by any stretch of the imagination. This is actually more of a negative thing than it is a good thing. Here's why. This thing pushes the human strength. Great. So now you're stronger. Here's a downside. So you're always in constant pain, and the butcher nails dig deeper and deeper into your brain, causing more and more pain. It's also in your spinal cord, so without it, you will die. But while it digs deeper and deeper and causes more and more pain, the only thing you can ever do to relieve that pain is to be in extreme anger and to fight. Here's another thing this thing does. It makes you constantly suffer open adrenal glands. Now what that means is you are constantly flooded with adrenaline. You cannot go to sleep with this fucking thing in your brain. Imagine constantly your heart is beating 100 beats a minute every fucking second Even when you're laying down and you are just sweating all the time because you feel like a fight-or-flight response Every day every minute 
every second. A lot of gladiators actually say that they enjoy fighting, not because it releases, um, it releases narcotics, but also because when they're fighting, they're allowed to finally sleep. So imagine that. These butchering motherfuckers are literally sleeping when they're killing you. That's kind of interesting. And that kind of gives us a glimpse into what Angron's dealing with. And this kind of explains why he's such a hateful motherfucker. Now, here's a problem. is um, In my last video where I talked about Jagatai and Horus probably being the only two meant for war, uh, Michael Barney kind of pointed this out, that Angron's kind of meant for war. I actually disagree with that. We don't know what the fuck Angron was made for. Well, we actually have some hint. We have some hints as to what he was meant for based on what his legion was prior to him taking control. This is, again, a nature versus nurture topic where naturally he was meant for one thing, but because of his environment and what he grew up through, he's one thing entirely different. So the Butcher Nail not only does all that negative bullshit and will also kill you eventually, even if you're a Primarch, it is definitely going to kill you no matter how much you regenerate. <coughs> Sorry, I got a bit of a cough. <coughs> okay, so not only is it going to do that, it's also going to rewrite your emotional responses. Now that's fucking interesting. So this is a dark age technology thing. So this is actually an ancient and very sophisticated piece of technology that modern tech priests don't know how the fuck to reproduce it. And they don't even understand how it works. But not only does the butcher's nail go in and cause all this mayhem, it also gets rid of all emotional responses and rewrites them. So what does that mean? That means that Angron probably was a Primarch who didn't mean to be angry all the time and wasn't meant for war. But because these butcher nails rewrote his brain, he is designed for war. I am emphasizing this because this is what the book says about the butcher nails. And now that you know the butcher nails are like that, that's why my argument is Angron was never meant for war. He was probably meant for another purpose. Much like Conrad Kurz was meant for justice, not for torture. Jagatai Khan was meant for war. Horus meant for war. A lot of other Primarchs weren't meant for this. So that's something I thought was fascinating. That's something I felt like talking about for a little bit. So he's in the Colosseum and he quickly ascended the ranks. Unbeatable. And he actually started training the other gladiators. Now... The nobles didn't really like Angron because every time that they took him around anywhere, he always tried to escape. This is natural. He always wanted to escape. Now, we don't know how long he's been on this planet because they don't care to give much detail about him. A lot of his uh, past is shrouded in mystery. But we do know this, is that this world was technologically advanced. Dark Age, technology type advanced. Now, why they couldn't have somehow make food for the peasants who knows who gives a shit the, the rich are allowed to live in decadent lifestyle that's all we care about but angron on his final attempt trying to bust out and failing he realized one big fucking thing he's not going to be able to bust out alone now this is a big thing because any other primarch if they failed the first fucking time they would have known the second time well, the butcher nails fuck with your brain, and they also decrease your intelligence, and they do kill you over time. This is also why I would say Angron is very despised by the Emperor and all the other Primarchs, because he is kind of stupid. But he's not stupid in the sense that he's willfully ignorant. No, he's stupid because someone fucked with his head. Now, with Angron, this is clear evidence of the case, where... You know, Alfarian and Omegon would have learned the first fucking time this doesn't work. Robert Gilliman, despite having his Codex of Astartes fucking toilet paper, he would have known the first time that maybe this isn't working. Angron had to fail repeatedly to realize this doesn't work. So this kind of puts him at odds. This kind of puts his intelligence level with the normal humans, who's uneducated, which just so happened to be Angron. So Angron does the most daring thing ever. During the Colosseum, they decided to host a tournament, but a more important event, and it actually drew a lot of attention. Thousands of gladiators were on the sands. This was going to be the biggest gladiatorial event ever. Every single gladiator fighting at the same time. 
at Angron's behest. Well, they busted out. Now, here's the thing. I don't know how many gladiators there were, because they don't really tell me. They just tell me there was a lot. And by the way they talk about how many got out, we can tell there was a lot more. Because in the books, they describe it as a small amount of men got out, which would be 2,000. 2,000 gladiators got out. Cool. That's Angron's war band. That's not enough, though. That was a very small amount compared to how many gladiators got killed and busted during this breakout. So this already tells me Angron sucks at strategizing. He's a great fighter. He's way better than any normal man. But intelligence-wise, he may actually be worse. Now, Angron, after two or three years, they just tell me a few years, but they just kept sending armies after armies after armies to kill Angron and his forces. Now, <clears throat> there's a lot of people in this world. So the fact that they're sending armies after armies after armies and Angron is literally destroying them all and he only lost a thousand people within the so many years, that's pretty fucking amazing. That or it's really bad writing. You decide. But somehow, despite being so fucking retarded that he couldn't get all the gladiators out of the Colosseum, somehow he was able to make the 2,000 survive and only lose 8,000 after fighting who knows how many hundreds of thousands of fucking soldiers. Now, all of a sudden, the Emperor comes across the world. He doesn't know that there's a Primarch here. He just kind of feels the psychic presence. So, he's talking to the world leaders, and they're gonna join the Imperium. This is great news. The Emperor doesn't have to spill human blood to get this planet into the Imperial fold. While he's talking, he realizes that they keep talking about a giant savage in the mountains. Oh, fuck me. That's a Primarch. Yep. Now, the Emperor teleports down there. Because Angron is surrounded by, in the older versions, they said five armies. Now they're saying seven massive armies. Don't really give me too much description, just say massive. Now, these armies are going to annihilate him. And the Emperor knows it. The Emperor's all fucking calculating. And he knows the odds. He's like, yeah, superhuman or not, you have only a thousand guys. And they're kind of starving. They may be good warriors, but starving warriors with shit morale and you're the only thing tying them together versus like probably 70,000 or 700,000, you're not going to fucking win. And Gron refused him. He said, nope, I belong here with my battle brothers because I swore an oath and I will overthrow this uh, corrupt place and I will rule this place. The emperor shocked at the refusal turned around teleported back up to his ship, looked back at all the possible scenarios, and concluded in his mind that Angron is, in fact, a fucking retard, and beamed his ass on top of his ship to watch in horror as he sees all of his brothers and sisters and whoever else he loved in that gladiator army to die. Now, to any other person, this would be definitely enough for me to betray the emperor right then and there but you also have to take into consideration he just saved angron's life you also gotta consider it that angron's not exactly mentally right in the head and this is what the emperor kind of noticed and the emperor's like i'm gonna have you looked under by uh sigvald the vigilant and i'm going to have a tech priest look at your head and of course, he looks and he sees this nail and he goes, oh, okay, this is gonna kill Angron. And this explains why he's so fucking retarded. Great. I'm gonna give him full control of his legion. Oh, ho <laughs> ho And I'm not gonna have him supervised at all. As to why, I have no fucking idea. But based on what his legion was supposed to be, 
I kind of have an idea. Now hear me out. Angron's pissed. Now, how pissed? Astronomically. He just broke his oath to his people. He just watched the Eaters of Cities, which is what his warband was called, get annihilated. And they were screaming for his name, wondering where the fuck he went. Those were people he could have loved. We don't know if those were like foster fathers like Luther was to Lionel Johnson. We don't know. But we do know is that this meant a great deal to Angron. This is why I say it's very sad. Because he's sitting in orbit and he's seeing that the Emperor did nothing to those nobles. He didn't go, oh, I am so sorry, Angron. Let me aid you in combat. No. The Emperor just said, listen, it's much easier to just teleport you onto the ship and let your people die, rather than try to destroy a world that just joined me. And Angron's not smart enough to understand that. He's smart enough to know why he hates the Emperor. I don't mean that he's like a full-on retard, I just mean that Angron's not a Primarch, essentially. He's a, he's a Primarch physically, but everything else that matters, he's not. So he's basically a giant, steroided up ogre. That's it. And this is really sad. And this is all something that he couldn't control. I mean, shit, him being beamed up into the Emperor's ship, he refused. And the Emperor still did it. So really, fate has always led Angron around. Angron's never had control of himself, like every other Primarch has. And this even makes him even more hateful of his other Primarchs. <clears throat> because the other Primarchs, they had empires. They ruled their worlds. Some had grand empires. Like Horus, he could actually contest the Imperium. But Angron had nothing. He had to be saved. Jesus, that's a, that's a severe dishonor that he's been dealt. And now he can never even go shoulder to shoulder with his brothers because what is he? He's a failure. He's very undeserving of the title Primarch. Shit, much less a general. And you see it with his tactics. He's just bloodthirsty. He just tells his guys to charge and butcher anybody. Now, that's kind of Angron's youth. And of course, during the Horus Heresy, we see more of him getting angry and angrier. But now I'm just going to address something. What was Angron made for? This is what you guys have probably been burning for. What was he made for? Well, let me put it in terms like this. He beat Perturabo in a fight. He beat Robert Gilliman in a fight. He beat Lehman Russ in a fight. The Warhounds were bloody butcherers of intense skill. Yeah, the only thing that this force was meant for was to fight other Primarchs. That's my idea. And the reason being is that when he was ascended to Primarch status by the Emperor, I think that's the reason why the Emperor didn't have him be supervised, because the Emperor didn't want to risk him bonding with his other Primarchs. As of much of a failure as he was, I think genetically he was made just in case a Primarch stepped out of line and he could use him to fight that Primarch. He wasn't meant for war, just meant to deal with a Primarch who stepped out of line. So that way the Emperor didn't have to get his hands dirty. Now, that may be a stretch, but if anyone, if you watch a lore video and someone goes, oh, well, Angron was always meant for war, just knowing what the Butcher Nails are, you can tell them with full certainty that they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. There's no evidence to say any of this. There's only evidence in what his legion was. Which is, yes, they were made for war, but they were always kept out of war. Now, why would you make someone for war, but not put them to use during the Great Crusade? There is a reason. Any time that a Space Marine chapter was fighting somewhere, or a Legion, my bad, I call them chapters, but anytime a Legion was fighting somewhere, they always had a garrison nearby of around 8,000 to 1,000 Battle Brothers of the Warhounds. Now, why would that be? Why would they supervise 
these other legions that are much bigger than them. My guess is Angron was supposed to be the secret police of the Primarchs. That's what he was meant to be. And that's why the Emperor didn't make him get chaperoned or anything like that. The Emperor wanted him to stay as individualistic as possible so when he had to go kill his brothers or fight them, he could do so with impunity. That's just my take on it. This has been Freezer 700. That's the lore on Angron and his origins and what his theories are, more or less. I hope you guys enjoyed. I am going to talk a bit about the Warhounds, I think, the next time I do a video. If you don't know who the Warhounds are by now, the Warhounds were later renamed the World Eaters. dun 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 So yeah, see you guys next time. I had fun making this video. 20 minutes long. This is a crazy long video. So I hope to see you guys next time. And like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you guys think. Because you guys really reacted well to Jagatai Khan. I hope you guys react well to this. See you next time.